G'day folks, it's uh, time for another equipment autopsy. Uh, as you can see we have a full size uh, small office copier. Uh, I say small because you can get them a lot bigger than this, but this is what I'd consider to be a small office sort of floor standing photocopier, or digital copier I should say. Um, this one was thrown out by my local uh, loan office finance broker. Uh, he said it basically I went to turn it on one morning and it just threw up a code and said call for service before it even made any of the important noises. So I looked the code up and with help from my friends at the Geek Group IRC we found that it is definitely a fuser error. It starts with F. Uh, it was a fuser error. It thinks the fuser is overheated and uh, that told me that the thermistors in it were gone, which they were. Unfortunately the rest of the fuse is also pretty much gone too. The Teflon's coming, almost coming off the roller, the fingers are getting worn and I think the cleaning ribbon's not far off either. So it's pretty much at its end of life. These machines are pretty much at their end of life because the Konica Minolta Biz Hub is all the rage. And I'm finding a real, finding it, found it really hard at just finding parts, much less ones that I can afford. So this one's basically scrap. Bit of a shame, I wouldn't mind a fast black and white uh, network printer but then I've already got one of them and I've already got a Minolta CF2001 which is a full colour A3 centre so I don't really need one of these um, and I don't I've tried a few online retailers or all the online retailers I could find without satisfactory results and I've also tried local um, service shops and again these are pretty much end of life and most of the fuses and things they've got are in equally bad shape like in the graveyard units so this one's done. Well, it's not done yet. We're going to take it apart. Not every nut and bolt, but I'll show you the important bits. I've already done a couple of videos on copiers. Uh, yeah, there's a Minolta, Konica Minolta 7228. It's like a uh, transitionary model between the uh, Minolta D'Alta DI series and the Konica Minolta BizHub series. Uh, that or it's a budget model that was sold at the same time as the BizHub but I think it's a little bit too old for that. I think it's a transitionary machine between the um, the merging of Konica and Minolta and the creation of these uh, BizHub systems which is what everyone's uh, selling now. It does still have all the BizHub style features. It doesn't have the uh, hard drive box function but of course you can uh, use it as printer, scanner, scan to server, fax and so on. You can uh, fax straight off the machine, whatever. All in one function, multi-function center. But this is a high miler. It actually looked like the drum had a bit of an issue. Down there, I think the wiper's taken a dump. It uh, looks like it's just in the right position to leave a black stripe down the bottom of an A3 page or an A4 that's fed crosswise. You could feed it A4 lengthwise and it'd be okay, but that's about it. So I'm not buying an imaging unit and a new fuser for it. Not worth it. I could reco that imaging unit. The drum looks okay. There's no big scratches or wear marks on it, but it's just one of those things. bugger or toner left in it as well so it needs toner. Now, end of life for you my little friend. It'll be a good source of parts like round rod stock and rollers and bearings and stepping motors and you name it. It's gonna be cool. Oh, I'm gonna charge my battery up while I uh, take the top off the auto document feeder and we'll look at that first. You know they say a doctor's handwriting can be hard to read but I reckon copier technicians can be just as bad. <laughs> Funny thing is the service history stops at 2009 with almost 80,000 on the clock so it's 2014 that's about uh, six years no not six years um, five years at least uh, yeah this machine's done a fair bit for a smaller unit I mean I see I've seen half a million copies on some of the big ones but they're designed to do 60 pages a minute like spit out a page a second on uh, into a book binding finisher or hole punch staple finisher for uh, big production jobs. This one hasn't done that. But 
It does have a standard document feeder. It's not a reversing one, unfortunately. They're kind of cool because you can shove a load of double-sided originals in there and it will automatically flip and scan each document both sides. And then use a duplexer drawer, which is also absent on this one as it would be, to turn the document over and then spit it back out after printing the other side. Um, although some of them might have an internal duplexer in the, the side there now, but I'm pretty sure, oh, I know my Minolta EP4000 has an RADF, reversing auto dock feeder, and it also has a duplexer drawer down here. It's about three down, and it opens up. It's just, it doesn't look like a paper drawer. It's a drawer full of rollers and flat trays and things, and that's where the document goes in, gets flipped over and spat back out into the printing stream to be uh, printed with the other side. And it does that one at a time because it is analog. It cannot scan to memory and just keep printing. So at least the advantage of digital is it'll scan at once and you can print many copies because it's, well, it's a glorified laser printer with a flatbed scanner mounted on top. There's the CCD down there. There's the lamp. It's a flatbed scanner with a basic computer pro um, system built into it, a controller, and a laser printer. That's what a digital copier really is. It's, uh, it's got some functions. It's obviously not a full PC. It might have a hard drive and a small RAM stick or maybe some uh, SD RAM in it. Uh, my old Minolta um, DI, not DI, um, CF2001 has a hard drive in it, uh, embedded processor, runs Fire EX3E. Yeah, it's uh, pretty cool stuff. But the uh, document feeder has three stepping motors cooling fan obviously three STK hybrid packs to drive them one for each uh, thing each um, stepper so that's the stepper driver board uh, STK two six sorry STK six seven two dash zero eight zero they'll be hybrid uh, stepper controllers of course cool stuff worth keeping if that's what you're into I mean I won't have a lot of use for it but I know somebody was asking me for stepper motors recently so if you're willing to pay shipping, maybe a bit of a tip in, in exchange, I'll, um, I'll pull all of these out, including the wiring harness and the board, and shove them in a post pack for you. They're probably going to be more. I mean, I don't need stepper motors that tiny. Uh, Julian's interested in trying to uh, numerically control my little mini mill there, but I need big stepper motors for that, and I need high torque stuff. These won't do it. So yeah, if you want little stepping motors, uh, get back to me. Anyway, auto document feeder. Document goes in, gets conveyed down, run over that slit glass there where the scanner um, lamp and mirror is, reflected down into the optics. And then afterwards, when it's done with that document, it's obviously fed it, it's fed it down from the top, down over this, past this roller, which is the traction roller, scooped it back up and we should just be able to separate that so it'll come back up here uh, no it goes down there it goes straight through there past those fingers those guides there we go just removing a jam you can flip it all back and it just comes out here and gets deposited on top of the original document cover yeah there's the exit again lots of little plastic rollers and pins and things in these tons of really cool stuff if you're into uh, just general hobby fabrication, steampunking stuff, whatever. If you get a chance to pick up an old copy, do it, especially if you haven't done it before. They are a bit heavy though, this weighs about 60-70 kilos, it's on the lighter side of the uh, floor standing copiers. The older you get, the heavier they get, and obviously the more capacity you get, the bigger they get, and can end up weighing 300 kilos if you're not careful. So. Just like moving an ATM, factor in some heavy lifting and very careful lifting too because, again, they're on wheels and if they get out of control on a tailgate lift or something like that, they will probably squash you to death. Again, that's all for clearing paper jams. You've got little, uh, probably acetyl rollers made out of acetyl, polyoxymethylene, little nylon fingers. Very neat. So, yeah, that's the uh, auto document feeder. Yeah, I had a feeling that line might be far out enough not to hurt the uh, printing process no matter what you feed it, but still, that imaging unit's not all that new. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's 
all got to come apart, which is not a bad thing because there are more and more good things in this. Lots of good things. Anyway, I guess I'd better strip the top half out and uh, we'll have a look at what logic boards and servos and other equipment are underneath the cover. You can already see the business side of the, uh, all the, uh, sorry, the logic side of the CCD module 